All right. So far, we talked about the reaction of alcohols with acids and acid derivatives to form esters, right? Now, what about phenols? Can they also give esters on reaction with carboxylic acids or their derivatives? Well, you see, phenols, as we know, are less nucleophilic than aliphatic alcohols. And why is that? Because of this. You can see that in phenols, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom is not localized on it. It's actually in delocalization with the pi electrons of the benzene ring. It means they are less available to act as a nucleophile or for a nucleophilic attack, correct? And this doesn't happen in the case of aliphatic alcohols where there is no such resonance and the lone pair of electrons are localized on the oxygen atom. So the oxygen in an aliphatic alcohol is much more nucleophilic than the oxygen atom of the phenols. So this means if you simply mix phenol with carboxylic acid under acidic conditions or under fissure reaction conditions, we do get an ester, a phenolic ester, but this reaction is very slow. It requires much harsher reaction conditions or longer reaction times to get even a decent yield. So this is not usually an efficient method to prepare phenolic esters. So what do we do in that case? Since phenol is less reactive, we have to compensate for this decrease in reactivity by using a stronger acid derivative, right? In other words, we need to employ activated acyl donors. Now, these are compounds where the acyl group is already highly electrophilic and have a good leaving group. And that makes them much more reactive even towards weak nucleophiles like phenols. You can see that we are talking about acid chlorides and acid anhydrides, right? These are the activated acyl donors. Alright, so what does the reaction look like? Well, the reaction of acid anhydride with phenol would look something like this. It would give us a phenolic ester and the byproduct in this case would be a carboxylic acid. Now, this reaction is more effective and commonly carried out in the presence of a base like pyridin. The base primarily aids the formation of a phenoxide ion, which is a much stronger nucleophile as compared to phenol. And not just that, the base also neutralizes the acidic byproduct formed in this reaction. You see, carboxylic acid can create or can result in unwanted side reactions, especially if you have any acid sensitive groups in a reactant. And even worse, as the acid builds up, it can result in the hydrolysis of the very product that we're trying to make, right? It can cause hydrolysis of ester. So that is why we almost always carry out this reaction in the presence of a base rather than employ harsher acidic conditions. But even then I have to mention that we do still carry out this reaction in acidic conditions where we employ concentrated sulfuric acid. And what does this do? Concentrated sulfuric acid basically protonates the carbonyl oxygen of the acid anhydride and that makes this carbon, carbonyl carbon more electrophilic. So that means it becomes more susceptible to the attack by even a weak nucleophile like phenol. But in general, as I said, we prefer to carry out this reaction in the presence of a mild base because you almost always get higher and cleaner yields of phenolic ester under basic conditions. And not just that, concentrated sulfuric acid can also cause side reactions like sulfonation and dehydration, which we all know is not what we want, right? They are undesired reactions. So this is the reaction with acid anhydride. Now what does the reaction with acid chloride look like? Again pretty similar. The reaction with acid chloride also gives us a phenolic ester. But the byproduct in this case is HCl. Yes. Now in this case the use of a base is absolutely non-negotiable. We have to use the base to neutralize the HCl byproduct that is formed here and to prevent any kind of undesired acid catalyzed reactions. So to reiterate what did we see with phenols, we saw that simple fissure esterification with phenol is highly inefficient and this is because of the decreased nucleophilicity of phenols, right? But that's not a big problem because synthetic chemists have really powerful tools in their hands which is the use of activated acylating agents like acid chlorides and acid anhydrides. Their ability to selectively esterify phenol is incredibly important in organic synthesis and in various industries. For instance, consider the synthesis of aspirin, you know, the tablet that doctors prescribe for headaches or body pain. Yes, the structure of aspirin looks something like this and aspirin 
or acetyl salicylic acid you can see is a classic example of a phenolic ester and if you look at the reactant that is used to prepare this aspirin salicylic acid contains both the carboxylic acid group and the phenolic OH group and if you look at the product aspirin what do we have here we need to specifically acylate the OH group to obtain aspirin and that can be done by the use of acylating agents like acetic anhydride so when we react salicylic acid with acetic anhydride it allows us to selectively esterify the phenolic hydroxyl group leading to the formation of aspirin and what's the byproduct here we have used acetic anhydride so the byproduct would be acetic acid so this is a perfect illustration of using activated acylating agents to target the phenolic group now in this case of aspirin you will notice that we have actually employed acidic conditions and not a mild base like pyridine right so why do we use this what does acid do basically it activates the acetic anhydride by protonating it and this makes the anhydride's carbonyl carbon significantly more electrophilic and not just that the byproduct is acetic acid right this is a weak acid and it does not require neutralization by an added base in the same way that hcl from an acid chloride would need so that's why in aspirin synthesis a tiny bit of acid like sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid is used again remember just enough to help this activation and not so much that the whole thing slows down entirely got it so i hope now you have a fairly good understanding of esterification as a process in the previous video we talked about alcohols and in this video we briefly touched upon the esterification with phenols we saw what drives the reaction what does the mechanism look like in general and what kind of catalysts do we employ like acidic catalyst or basic catalyst and the rationale behind why we use them right so through these varied pathways the fischer esterification the anhydride methods and acid chlorides we are able to transform these hydroxyl bearing compounds into esters that have a lot of applications from fine chemicals and polymers to life saving pharmaceuticals all right folks that's all for now let's look at another interesting chemical reaction of alcohols and phenols in the next video